Hello and welcome to a special edition of uh, Platinum Pride. It's a series where we're celebrating India at 75, what we've achieved, what we've not. And uh, today we're talking about brands, uh, brands made in India, brands made for India, uh, Indian brands made for the world. And I think two, can't find two better people than Harish Bhatt, uh, he's brand custodian Tata Group, uh, as well as chairman uh, Tata Coffee. Uh, and Rama Bajapurkar, who was his teacher <laughs> at uh, uh, IIM. Uh, but apart from that, has, uh, of course, taught uh, uh, legions of uh, uh, great managers across India and is one of the most interesting brains <laughs> I uh, have encountered in um, uh, recent times or, well, uh, uh, even in the past. So thank you so much, uh, both Rama and Harish, for joining us. And, um, you know, we've, we've uh, talked about brands uh, that have been made in India, that have been made for the world. Um, let's start by talking about homegrown brands versus brands that have been acquired by uh, Indian companies right off the bat. Um, uh, Rama, would you like to take that uh, idea first and talk about how many of uh, how many Indian brands have really gone global? Uh, you know, maybe Harish's group is uh, one of the few. Uh, we haven't really had too many, right? Well, uh, if you think about, for example, the entire IT industry, the made in India label, made from India label has certainly gone global. If you look at the IITs, I think because of what they've actually done, that is a homegrown brand that's mm -hmm gone uh, definitely uh, got global recognition and all the good stuff that goes with brands but otherwise uh, it is my sort of experience and observation over time that a lot of uh, Indian companies India Inc has chosen to go the route of acquiring brands uh, overseas buying companies that have brands rather than uh, if you like exporting a brand and building a brand elsewhere hmm. the way they have done it it has been mostly in a follow the flag kind of fashion. But by and large, I think we preferred the acquisition route to the homegrown brand building route. Of course, present company excluded as always. That's what yeah. makes it without us. Why has that happened, uh, Rama, before I go to Harish? Why has that happened? I think that has uh, happened because uh, it is, uh, well, when you want 70 rupees to a dollar, it is uh, easier to already buy a, or 40 or 50, whatever we've seen over the years, it's easier to buy and, uh, and, and acquire a p &L stream rather than put a large amount of investment that's required, I think, in order to build brands. Because I think while we call everything a brand, uh, mm. by and large, there's no instant karma when it comes to actually building brands. Mm. Building brands overseas is an expensive proposition. So I think uh, acquisition has uh, definitely been a simpler and easier route to be able to access uh, global markets and get a better return per unit of the money that you put in. Uh, Harish, I'd like to bring you in here and talk about the whole idea of building a global brand versus the new strategy, uh, you know, that uh, your companies have adopted as well. Uh, in some cases of going multi-country uh, rather than, you know, uh, the broad brush globalization that Rama has uh, talked about before. Do you want to uh, expand on that? Yes, Kaveri. So, you know, at the outset, it's uh, rather challenging to sit in a discussion with Tessa. <laughs> not, not easy to refute anything that she says. <laughs> I'm thinking it's so nice to have bragging rights on someone who's so accomplished. I no. mean, <laughs> so, uh, it's a, you know, having Rama on the screen takes me back to my days at I am Ahmedabad. But, but you know, I, I agree with Rama's thesis. I agree yeah. with Rama's thesis that many Indian companies have taken to acquiring brands globally rather than building, uh, taking homegrown brands and making them global. Hmm. I think we have examples of both in the Tata Group, Kaveri, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, you know, a homegrown brand like the Taj Group of Hotels. That's right. In many countries across the world. And actually last year was ranked the world's strongest hospitality brand. Wow. Um, you have an example like Tata Consultancy Services, yeah. uh, you know, uh, being present in more than 100 countries globally and being the dominant name in its field, as much as Rama spoke of the other IT services brands, which I think have also done India proud. Um, and then you have a, a name like Tata Communications, which is also fairly global in its outreach. On the other hand, you have examples of brands like Tetley 
or Jaguar Land Rover, which have been acquired by the Tata Group over the years. I was, I was involved to some extent with the Tetley acquisition. And the reason that acquisition happened was that, you know, to build a brand of tea or any FMCG brand globally uh, takes a lot of doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can never say whether that effort is going to be uh, successful or not, unlike building a B2B brand globally. Uh, and therefore, in the case, and Tetley was a unique asset. It was the world's second largest brand of tea. And when uh, Tata Tea, as the company was then called, it's now called Tata Consumer Products, wanted to expand beyond the shores of India, uh, this was a unique offering which mm -hmm. became available. And if you recall, in the year 2000, it was perhaps the first time a global brand had been acquired by an Indian company. That's so right. it, was, it was a landmark acquisition um, in itself. Having said that, I've also been part of an organization which has tried taking its brand and building it globally. And that's what you referred to, Kaveri, with Titan. That's so right. Titan has chosen the strategy of taking its homegrown Titan brand, selecting countries in which the brand can establish a very good footprint, and then moving into those countries alone. You know, like, like Rama would have told me uh, in the classroom, more mm -hmm. multi-country strategy rather than a global strategy. Mm. That's worked very well for Titan as well. Uh, you know, in, in, in countries in the Middle East or in countries like Vietnam, Titan has built very good stakes and very good market shares for its brand by pursuing this multi-country route. And, uh, you know, Harish, I'd like to, you know, con uh, given that we're uh, talking on a day that uh, an Indian CEO has taken over Twitter as well and great celebrations as well. How come our, uh, and of course that happens every time in Indian, a made in India manager takes over, uh, you know, a global brand. Uh, I just wanted to uh, park this thought here. Our managers are, as well are a global brand now, but somehow uh, the products don't seem to translate as well as uh, the people do. Why, why is that? So I think, uh, Kaveri, you know, managers or intellectual resources are actually global. Hmm. And, and uh, you know, to me, a very fine intellect which works in India hmm. uh, can work uh, equally well, if not even better globally, hmm. uh, as long as you have uh, all the other aspects of managing a multicultural organization. In the case of products, your consumer insight has to be very strong hmm. into cultures which are different from India. Hmm. Uh, and products and brands are based typically on consumer insight. That requires a very deep understanding of consumers in country after country. Mm. And establishing that very strong consumer insight, I think, is the foundation of building a brand in any country, whether it be in India or multinational or global. Mm. Uh, to me, the effort required in that, I think Indian companies will need to invest in in the future if they have to take homegrown brands and make them global. You know, even in a set of countries, even in a set of 10 or 15 countries, for a brand like Titan, I think uh, the effort required for, you know, good consumer insight in each country, whether it's Saudi Arabia or UAE or Vietnam, uh, there's a lot of effort required. And then you have to kind of adapt the brand to each of those markets. That's right. So uh, there is the, certainly, certainly a lot of effort required there. Right. Rama, may I bring you in here and talk about this aspect of, uh, you know, uh, the the risk appetite, uh, both uh, in terms of investment, as well as in terms of uh, the, you know, the stomach, the, the stomach required to build a brand uh, overseas. Uh, do you feel that the new generation is uh, stronger on both than the previous generation of India Inc.? If you, that's a really uh, good question, actually, because if you go back and look at, uh, let's say, the generation of uh, midnight children or even midway children, people born in the 70s and so on, many of whom are still in leadership positions mm -hmm. in India Inc. I think the generational transition to liberalization children and subsequently has, uh, you know, it's just beginning to happen. And I think that in the early days, as people will tell you, to go and take a made in India product and take it overseas was really hard. I mean, I remember Sanjay Lalbhai of uh, Arvind Mills saying that when they took Indian denim samples overseas, people said, you know, we're not even sure this has been made in India. It's so mm. good. Mm. Or I met someone the other day who said that uh, she had followed her husband to uh, Dubai, Saudi Arabia and Jamaica before going to the US. And I said, why Jamaica? And she said it was IT services. And that was the one client 
And the client said, I will give you business provided you have to come and live here. Mm. So, I mean, I think that they, those those were the challenges, right? I think that's why we also celebrate uh, the IT sector because it kind of changed the perception of, yeah. of, of, of the Indian label. Now the next generation, so I think it's been a long haul. So to that extent, I think, it's on the shoulders of this generation that actually took India overseas and even took it to distributors and from distributors elsewhere uh, that stands the next generation that comes. I think today a lot of startups are born global. You know, hmm. they're born in the cloud, they're born digital, they're born That's global. Right. Uh, their capital is global. Yeah. So they, it's not unusual for uh, uh, a VC to tell them that you've got to come to the US and you've got to sit there while you get your business going. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that uh, they have uh, sometimes maybe a little ahead of time, but I think we've seen that. We've seen Oyo, we've seen Ola, we've seen all their, their overseas plans. We see a lot of startups building products which are global in nature. So yes, I think that uh, the risk appetite when you have gone through these many struggles to actually get established, when you didn't have all that much money. I mean, today we talk about billions of dollars and trillions of dollars. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about uh, all those things, but I think uh, and 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 the first wave that went out was not completely fraught with without risk, right? We've had banks have to roll back. We've had consumer goods companies have to roll back. If you look at uh, the number of people who went out and bought big time and had to come back and, uh, you know, sort of sort it out. So that whole learning curve has blunted. I do know that in the early days on boards, when a CEO came and said, uh, well, certainly for me, came and said, uh, you know, I want to buy this company overseas. We would really go through a lot of why do you really want to buy it? Mm -hmm. And OK, if it's a financial investment, then prove to me that at least the financial investment part will come back. So building brands was a was a longer, longer thing. And the new nice. CEO, by the way, is from an Indian brand, as I read IIT Bombay. So, and Kendra Vidyale. I mean, we forget those, uh, you know, the brands there. Uh, I mean, Bollywood is a big brand. But again, when you look at it in terms of Hollywood, uh, it doesn't have the same financial strength, right? I mean, our, our, mar uh, our markets also determine that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Bollywood is a billion dollars and more, which is something that one Marvel movie makes, uh, you know, in its lifetime, right? Yeah, merchandising and everything, the offshoots of it. So I think we're getting there. I think uh, we have to remember that we were closed till 1991. Right. So, I mean, we have to, to start from there and take it forward. You know, uh, Harish, can I bring you in here and talk about the learnings uh, of, uh, uh, you know, going uh, into uh, a country, building a brand versus the learnings of acquiring a brand and uh, building it, you know, what are the what are the different kinds of learnings that uh, the Tata Group has seen? Yeah, so uh, Kaveri, I'm going to speak from my own experiences, both yeah. in Titan and in Tata T. And, uh, you know, the learnings from the acquisition of Tetley, for instance, which is which is mm. now uh, uh, more than 20 years in the past, mm. really has been that you need to stay true to the idea of that brand. Hmm. Tetley is a very British brand. It was born in Yorkshire. Um, it, its origins are in England. Um, and it sells very well in many English-speaking parts of the world. Now, of course, it's strong in India as well. So you, uh, one of the learnings, therefore, was to maintain that very British idea of Tetley. And, and the core of the brand uh, has to remain constant. And I don't think should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, should be deviated from. Uh, that's very, very important. The second, of course, uh, Kaveri, is that uh, in the case of FMCG and B2C brands, I think it's very, very important to understand that every country is different from the other. You know, the way tea mm. is drunk in UK versus the way tea is drunk in the United States of America versus the way it mm. is drunk in India. So tea in the UK, you could have with a spot of milk, but the tea in the United States is often yeah. iced tea that you have, uh, you know, um, yeah. Lots of Americans are very fond of iced tea. And in India, of course, you have your masala chais and, um, you know, um, yeah. teas which are boiled with milk. In and fact, a lot tea, of, uh, tea bag yeah. itself, tea bag itself yeah. is such a recent concept yeah. in India, you know. That's correct. Actually, the tea bag was invented by Tetley in the UK. Just, uh, you know. Uh, that, exactly. Uh, yeah. But, but it's come into India relatively recently. So I think the second learning is that you have to understand that even though it may be a global uh, brand that you've acquired, actually the brand has to get uh, get adapted 
and has to focus on the consumers of that particular country. Right. You know, right. you can be global, but you also have to be local. Hmm. So that was uh, so. Those are two quick learnings from the acquisition of a global brand. You know, keep the brand pristine to its hmm. idea, and understand that in every market you need the right uh, right product to service the right consumer need. Hmm. In terms of building a homegrown brand. Uh, in specific countries outside uh, India, Kaveri, if I reflect on my experience with Titan hmm. and a country like Vietnam, for instance, uh, where the brand was launched at the time that I was in Titan, um, you had to understand, first and foremost, you had to understand consumer preferences. Hmm. What kind of wristwatches do Vietnamese consumers like to wear? Hmm. Or do they like these robust big watches? Do they like, uh, you know, understated slim watches? Do they like watches with a lot of bling on them? Or do they like watches which are, uh, you know, very elegant, but not, uh, not obtrusive? So that was the first part of understanding that very well. And the second part was, how do you translate Titan into that culture? How do you get Titan closer to that culture mm -hmm. so that people in that country uh, relate to the brand? They don't right. see it as an Indian brand. They see it as a global brand, which also belongs to their country. Mm. Uh, and a number of things you have to do there, you know, to build that cultural affinity and uh, emotive connect. A number of marketing programs had to be run. Mm. The way the brand is presented to the local customer had to be with all the Vietnamese nuances. Mm. So just like in India, you do a special collection for the Diwali period. You mm. had to do, you know, a series of special collections for uh, Vietnamese New Year or mm. around iconic Vietnamese structures and uh, iconic dates in their calendar. So the second part of it was really to take your brand be true to the idea of your brand, but adapt it for the specific culture into which you are going. Hmm. Hmm. So those, yeah. those, those, those are some learnings coming. Right. So uh, uh, Rama, may I bring you in here again and talk about, so what really will it take for India to build a brand in this age of Atmanirbhar Bharat, where we're talking about, uh, you know, local uh, uh, for uh, uh, vocal for local, what will it take to build a brand that can become transglobal? Say, um, you know, um, a, a Facebook or a Google or an Apple in, in, any, in any area. I thought we had established that we have actually built uh, a, a fair number of global brands. You know, hmm. so again, maybe we have to first examine the thing of have we not built global brands? Maybe we want a brand to look like something, be like something. Yeah, I mean, we have an idea that a brand looks like a, a, a can of Pepsi. It has to be an apple, or a, it, has yeah, to be this, yeah. it has to be that. Yeah. But I mean, um, uh, so so are we saying not a brand uh, about India? Because that there's Patak Spickle and Cobra Beer and Tasty right. Bite and everybody else. But are we saying for an Indian company to go and establish a really big brand. I think we've done that already with uh, the IT setup. We've done it with the largest exporter of two wheelers. Uh, but I think what it will, and now I think we are already uh, going to be showing it much more with the next generation of startups. So I think there are two answers for uh, the new age. We should just let them roll and uh, see where they come. But at that time, we'll say they're not really local companies because they actually <laughs> are of Indian origin, but they have American yeah, yeah. capital and they're based out of Singapore. But uh, so, so you know, I don't know that. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really know what would be the right answer to what would really be a brand uh, that came uh, out of uh, out of India. I mean, uh, but for legacy companies, I will say, having seen the first wave of going mm. out. A little bit of burning your fingers, leverage Indian balance sheets, what companies overseas, uh, you know, we know that, for example, Goldrich bought a lot of companies in South Africa, in the UK, in Russia. I also know that uh, there are companies that have been bought in Malaysia and Indonesia and uh, so on and so forth. So I think uh, some of them have worked, some of them have not worked and have caused more trouble. So I would say that uh, for, for, for the larger Indian companies, the idea going forward is not to create a revenue stream in dollar or yen or something else, but to not be satisfied with saying, 
I'm selling to my distributor, my distributor is selling to the customer. I always say that's a relationship like between the viceroy and the queen. You know, I give you the right to do whatever it is that you want to do. Hmm. But to want to aim to build a market position and to say that I want the value that comes out of building the market position. So it is just a little more ambition uh, as compared to uh, saying that a PNL is the same as building a brand, but building a PNL is not building a brand. So it would be to sit down and pick carefully, as Harish says, uh, which are the karma bhumis where you're going to actually put that money, spend that money, build mm-hmm. that brand, and build it for the long haul. Right. So I think boards also ought to give give managements more gamble money, having made sure that the gamble is uh, you know is is going to pay off. So. We have to get to the second round of uh, globalization. I think we're done with the first round. And the second round will definitely be uh, be building brands. I mean, the IT companies have done it and done it at le- relatively low in relatively low investments. Right. Yeah, but uh, well, if you, I, I know once upon a time, Naran Murthy said that he had done, he had traveled 300 days that year and addressed, I don't know how many overseas convocations and, uh, and, and, and uh, investor meets. So if you don't count what it would have cost to do that in terms yeah. of just sheer energy and drain, right. yes, now we are ready for uh, for more formal investments in a, in a different way. Pharma, for instance, again, a global brand. But, you know, again, there's nothing like a specific label that you can see, you know. Firstly, we're in the generics uh, market. Yeah. So to that, but, you know, again, I think we have to, we have to rethink a little bit of what brand is. Otherwise, we're never going yeah, to celebrate. Exactly. <laughs> we are. India is the pharmacy of the world. I think right. India is the offshoring, one of the premier offshoring capitals of the world. It's established deep tentacles around the world. I think Ari should be uh, the, the, the first to agree from uh, his uh, own experience. We've also sent off stuff that we wanted to do elsewhere. So I think we've already got it. And maybe our way of branding is... Uh, exactly. Different. Maybe thinking about the brand itself ought to change, right? But I guess, and I, I would really want Harish to weigh in on this, to say that what's the kind of branding success that we should be happy with as Indians and, and why? Yeah. Harish, your so teacher has you. asked you, so you have to do it. No, no. <laughs> yes, I will, I will regard oh, this as a, as a quiz. Uh, for grading. So, no, I but, want to learn, I swear yeah. to you. <laughs> but, but you know, Kaveri, I think uh, each country, including India, should focus on specific sectors in which uh, we think we have the capability right. of building global brands. Hmm. We should not be so focused on, you know, whether it's product brand or service brand or a corporate brand. So uh, I think, uh, you know, building a global brand can happen from any of those, you know, right. like uh, Rama said earlier, Bollywood is a global brand, yoga yeah. is a global brand, yeah. and both those have come out of India, just like a lot of brands that come out of the United States come out of Silicon Valley. Yeah. Okay. There are specific areas where India has built strong competencies. I think the pharma sector, like Rama said, uh, the IT services sector, um, and uh, uh, the development of three or four or five more sectors where we can build global brands uh, would be perhaps one prerequisite. Mm. The other caveat is, you know, for many entrepreneurs in India and for many corporates in India, India is a huge market like China. Yeah. And there is so much headroom for growth. Uh, and because India is such a huge market in early stages of evolution in so many categories with such a large headroom for growth, Many entrepreneurs and many corporates, therefore, keep their focus very keenly on India. Exactly. So, so therefore, if you have to go global, I think you have to be more ambitious and you have to recognize that while India is a large market, the globe is a much, much larger market. And maybe there are slices where you can actually go out and conquer the globe. So it requires a mindset. And I agree with Rama that some of our younger entrepreneurs are bringing that mindset to Hmm. Uh, so it also requires that mindset of saying, you know, I will not be satisfied with what I can get in India. Uh, building a brand globally has is going to give me a much larger canvas to paint on. Right. Rama, can I ask you, since we're all obsessed with China, uh, are there any lessons we can learn from the brands that China has bil- built, like uh, Xiaomi or TikTok? Yeah, I'm watching them with uh, I, I know that they've also made the transition from buying up companies to actually building their, their brands. I think uh, Sh- Xiaomi came actually also at a very uh, interesting price performance point. Uh, I think it came in 
at a point in time, certainly it took India by storm, it took the world by storm. I don't know what uh, lessons uh, we can learn. I'm not even sure how they did it. I know that... Uh, yeah, we're not sure. That's true. Yeah, TikTok <laughs> is my favorite brand. Uh, what is it about uh, about TikTok that you like? Well, I love TikTok because, I mean, for me, of course, the primary place of consumer insight because there's so much fun that's happening there. But what I love about TikTok is uh, how it's just just given an avenue for a certain kind of expression to mm. so many kinds of people. Mm. And so it's a fairly well-defined brand. I mean, what I would, I would not be pedantic as much on TikTok as I would, you know, WhatsApp University. We yeah. say, we never call it TikTok University. I mean, TikTok is just... Uh, just so much, uh, so much fun. So I guess captured uh, imagination, I guess. Uh, yeah. But so have Indian brands captured imagination here. But I think China has gone gro- global for, for for a number of factors, right? Uh, and 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 not including, not not excluding availability of money. How yeah. you, uh, uh, but I also think it's what the Professor Shimantra Ghoshal used to talk about. Uh, the battle for, he said, every company is the battle for dreams, the battle for markets, and the battle for competencies. Wow. And I think... It's we, markets, competencies. Yeah, and and, and, and he has, uh, he's, he's no more now, but uh, so he, he often made the point that the battle for dreams is where a lot of people lose. Yeah. So for some reason, and, and fueled in and hardwired into their DNA in many ways that we can see even in the, the geopolitical conducts and everything, uh, there seems to be a battle for dreams that is way ahead of our yeah, battle for dreams. Exactly. Call it conquest, call it wider, yeah. wider frontiers and so on. So the younger generation, I think, is ready to try and win the battle for dreams. I mean, I read somewhere that at some point, uh, Ola was saying, why not auto rickshaws in Manchester? And at one yeah. level, I thought, oh, good Lord, we cannot be exporting you know, okay, they're e-rickshaws, but we... But what be. fun, nah? it'll but be so much fun. Level, I thought my generation would never think yeah. of taking the auto rickshaw, which we're so ashamed of because it's a wannabe car and not even a <laughs> wannabe car, and going and actually putting it in Manchester. And, and, and why? Or I said to someone that, why is Ola wanting to go to Australia when Uber is already there? Now, that's the way my generation thinks. Yeah. And that person said, so they're there, so what? I mean, yeah. there's room for one more. Exactly. And and maybe it is also the battle for dreams that is the Chinese mindset. I personally think we would do better in the battle for markets because I think we we have been uh, had a much uh, richer and stronger ethos of competing in open markets. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think battle for dreams is uh, probably one reason where they... Uh, yeah, and, and that's oh, why I, I would love to get Harish with you, but again, you guys are going to talk about <laughs> yeah. this question. But you know, Harish, the best Guru Dakshina student can give a teacher, which you've given me, is to go way beyond where I actually am, and that's why I turn to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sh- I'm not so sure of that, Rama. But since you asked me a question, I will answer. And uh, you know, if you look at Chinese brands, Kaveri, yeah, and look at look at Xiaomi, which has done very well in India. Yeah. And perhaps in other countries across the world or TikTok, which is Rama's favorite brand. <laughs> there are two or three characteristics that they have. One is that the uh, they're all technology forward brands. They mm. use some technology or the other uh, uh, to underpin their branding. And uh, in a way, because they use very good technology, they're able to overcome any any other images you might have had of China. Mm. So. So because the technology is so utility friendly and and sits very well. The second point I think Rama has already made, they offer a very good performance value kind of equation. Um, You know, if you take Chinese mobile phones, for instance, Hmm. uh, and compare them with a Samsung or an Apple or any of the other global brands, Hmm. you will see that the performance value equation sits very nicely particularly for middle class india yeah and and uh, th- that's something that helped them uh, that helped them uh, uh, market their brands globally the, the other thing i find uh, kaveri is uh, many chinese entrepreneurs uh, mm-hmm. let's say the founder of xiaomi or or the founders of similar companies set their ambitions very very high mm-hmm. china itself is a huge market no doubt yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but but they then uh, identify five or 10 other countries where they should become equally large and they go after it hammer and tongs. Hmm. Um, 
So I guess those are three reasons why, uh, you know, Chinese brands in some segments have become very popular. But, you know, the point I want to make is they become popular in segments which have a lot of technology around them. Right, right. I've not yet seen a large Chinese brand, for instance, in the FMCG market. In India. Yeah. Okay. Which uh, be interesting. Uh, uh, in the in the consumer product space in India. Yeah. So they've, they've chosen their battleground carefully and they are going hammer and tongs it. Yeah, perhaps that's what we need to do. And maybe the new generation, as Rama is saying, is doing that. Rama, uh, uh, as we close this, may I uh, ask you, uh, you know, something that Harish had raised about the three or four new markets that perhaps we could focus on as we, uh, you know, pick our uh, uh, made in India, uh, made for the world uh, battles. Uh, would you like to, um, you know, suggest which these new sectors could be? I don't think uh, multi-country globalization as compared to broad brush is about saying India is going to go and invade these four Mm. places. Mm. I think it is about saying that for every business, sit Mm. down and see where if you put the markets in pain and gain, depending Mm. on what they're good at doing and how painful it's going to be to build there. Mm. To actually for every company, forget about every sector, to Mm. actually sit down and say these are the four places that or the five places or whatever the five countries that I'm going to go after. It's exactly mm-hmm. like saying some people will do UP and Bihar, some people will do the South. So mm-hmm. I don't know that, I don't think it also works for India to, to sit down and declare that these are the six markets and let's go after them. Right. Uh, so some- Or even the six sectors that, you know, maybe we could focus on jewelry or textiles or whatever. I think every sector, the, the, the question is not uh, what is and why it is so, but how to make it so. So I think every sector- must have companies which have global ambition. Right. I think we've seen it uh, in uh, telecom. I think, how about education? I mean, we've, we've, we've also seen people like SPGN have gone and built brands in Dubai and the Middle East. Right. So I think the traditional Indian follow the flag. There's a lot of flag to follow. I think that, uh, <laughs> sure. that I think we, we know how to do. But I think beyond that, I think there are companies that are focused on Africa. There are companies that say, no, I want to go right into the U.S. If I win in the U.S., I will win everywhere else. Right. Uh, Europe has traditionally been a harder market, partly because of uh, uh, partly culturally, partly language, uh, you know, um, and I remember also reading about someone who tried to do an acquisition and broached it before soup was over, which is not done. <laughs> there are more things we need to learn. I've often wondered how come IT companies have done so well in America, but not so well in Europe uh, yeah. in the early days. And I think America is the land of the free and the brave and, you know, uh, is, is, is far more open. Uh, so, and we don't consider the Middle East. I mean, there are lots of Indian brands that have done very well there. Have done well in the Middle East, absolutely. Yeah. That that have done well in uh, Dubai, for example. You uh, you have a, you have a lot of uh, of good of good brands. I would like to see, like we have Italian jewelry here. I would like to see Indian. I've always wanted to, even in all my my years uh, on the board of Titan. Uh, I would love to see Tanishka actually go yes. on the watches. I mean, yeah. <laughs> made Indian jewelry. Uh, some of the Tanish stuff is so fabulous. I yeah. would love to see that. If we're buying Italian jewelry in India, I mean, why are we not buying Tanish jewelry elsewhere? So Harish has to take that message to his board right away. No. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so Rama ra, 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 take it forward. So, so ra, 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 Rama was my director on the board of Titan when I was a manager <laughs> there, but Rama is quite right. And yeah. Kaveri. Uh, you Tanera know, Tanishka, saris, Tanera yeah. saris, Tanish yeah. jewelry. Why not? So, so Tanishk has uh, Tanishk has recently entered Dubai, the country that Rama was talking about, right. and has a has a growing growing but you know very appealing presence in Dubai. So I think Tanishk has taken that first step already. Uh, but I do agree with the Rama. You know, in in sectors like uh, jewelry. In sectors like saris, for instance, yeah. which are which are so quintessentially Indian, mm. um, or in larger, you know, on a larger frame, textiles, perhaps. Textiles, like yeah. uh, those are sectors where I think uh, India has the uh, intrinsic capability to uh, deliver global brands in the future. Mm. I think that's also true of Ayurveda, yeah. perhaps true of yoga. Some of these can because they're associated with India in a very yeah. intrinsic way. Um, but I agree with Rama. You know, if you're in any particular sector, 
you may be in it services or you may be in pharma or consumer products business or consumer durables you have to choose your battles very carefully mm-hmm. and the choice of countries i think will differ from sector to sector mm-hmm. uh, so i was i was reading uh, you know very recently i was reading harsh mariwala's uh, autobiography harsh it is right. and he speaks about why he chose bangladesh as a country to uh, glow global with why did he with coconut oil because because user habits there uh, right. you know were conducive right. uh, people oil their hair yeah. uh, in in bangladesh like we tend to do like in india yeah so he made that choice from from marico and i think every company will have to make its choices on on which are the markets which are most akin to your market and like rama says where does the win pain ratio yeah balance out for you right and also i think closing arguments from uh, both uh, you and rama uh, the whole redefining of what a brand means i mean the indian mind is a great global mind a, a global brand isn't it the indian manager the indian mind so uh, we also have to i think in this new century in this new age look at how brand the brand itself is defined um uh, would you agree uh, rama and then i'll ask harish to close this i don't think we have to redefine what a brand is a brand is basically a talk of your walk it's a shorthand label that uh, gives you a certain starting off advantage right uh in terms of what you stand for i think in our heads we have to sit down and say and uh, sit down and 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 say when we have exported like our biggest export has actually been middle management as somebody said yeah. so is that is that not a made in india brand right. and, you know of human capital uh so i think we might have more brands uh, you can buy uh, in in indian stores around the world you can buy stuff that has obviously come out of india that has labels and so on so i think we need to reposition and our uh, we need to reevaluate in our heads hmm. whether how, how how good we've been on this brand journey i mean hmm. if fragmented uh, uh fragmented realities are the way we are then that is the the way we are so i kind of feel that instead of playing somebody else's game we should play our game and play our, it well right and uh, like we've been pharmacy to the world like we've been it sector to the world if we can be various other things to the world whether it comes out of one company or it comes out of a cluster of companies mm. or it comes out of services or it comes out of anything else uh, uh maybe we should think about that i think the most important thing that a brand actually does is gives you uh is 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 like a multiplier right it gives you a multiplier on the growth you can get it gives you a multiplier on the money that you can make right. and i think right. the question is are we getting a fair bang for our buck and if we aren't should we go and try and build market positions instead of being satisfied with building pnls and right. i think that is uh, is uh, is really the the challenge that i think we have and eventually finally supposing india in decides i mean sometimes when people come to me at boards and say i want approval for an acquisition to mm. buy something in turkey or somewhere mm. i sometimes look at them and say we are sitting in a country which has all the demographics that we do where at 7% growth we will double our uh, we will add another india to india in 10 years and if you don't find this attractive enough i mean just explain to me why the hell i am giving you money to go and buy something somewhere else right uh and if india decides that that's where it's going to go i mean should we and if we manage to to build vibrant brands here which uh, resist all forms of invasion and attack uh, mm-hmm. should we be berating ourselves that we've not built a global brand or should we not right exactly uh, so i think we're probably much better off than we think we are except that we're not monetizing well enough would be the argument i would have but i will let harish have absolutely the last word on this absolutely and i'm the preacher and he's the practitioner <laughs> harish so my my perspective kaveri is uh, first and foremost you asked us what's a brand right that has remained unchanged in my mind since my uh, student days under rama a brand yeah. stands for an idea in your mind right it's a very intangible idea but it's very sharp and very uh, well defined so the best brands you know the best brands in india or across the world stand for that idea hmm. and will be consistent with it now when i talk of building a global brand you know one of the things from where i sit that i am very proud of is that the tata brand uh, is amongst the top 100 most valued brands in the world right uh, and uh, 
uh, it's been we have been improving our rank year on year amongst the global rankings but there are a number of companies and product and service brands which contribute to tata hmm. you know if you go the world over or within yeah. india uh, there is tata consultancy services there is tata steel there is tata motors there is tata power there is titan Absolutely. you know uh, all tata consumer products tetley all all the brands of the group jaguar land rover so uh, in my view uh, you know tata is building out as a global brand um, you know on the back of many many of these product and service brands so that's yet another way yeah. the idea of the tata brand remains pristine but uh, on the back of many product and service categories you build a you build a, a global brand yeah. so I, I i do believe that uh, you know that happens also with japanese and korean companies yeah. which are yeah. present in a number of uh, different sectors right um, and uh, perhaps that's one way kaveri for india to also look at uh, building a global brand right we have we have other conglomerates in india which span many many product and exactly. service categories wonderful thank you both so much harish bhat and rama bijapur it was really like a master class i think if i put it out uh, to all the b schools we'll get huge response it was such a privilege to listen to both of you i have taken copious notes and i'm going to now yeah. read read them back to myself what a pleasure to talk to both wonderful brands and uh, wonderful people thank you so much thank you kaveri thank you thank you Th- thank, thank you kaveri thank you rama what an enjoyable conversation thanks yeah. a lot it was Indeed, thank you.